Hi everyone, um, this is Emre Karaman. I'm a postdoc at Center for Quantitative Genetics and Genomics uh, at Aarhus University in Denmark, and I will share some results from Gentor Project Group Package 4, uh, where we focused on multi-breed genomic prediction. Genomic prediction accuracy depends on the genetic variants that can be explained by SNPs and the accuracy of, of the SNP effect estimates. For an accurate genomic prediction, we need a large a population of individuals um, with both phenotypes and genotypes. And this is actually not possible for all breeds or for all traits. And we can use uh, SNP effects from another breed. This is known as a cross-breed prediction strategy, or we can add data from other breeds, which is known as uh, multi-breed prediction. When uh, we combine data from multiple, uh, multiple breeds to form a reference population, we rely on SNP QTL linkage disequilibrium across the breeds, but actually that, that could be different for uh, different breeds. To overcome this LD difference, difference issue, uh, we can uh, include QTL or SNPs in high linkage disequilibrium with QTL, but this uh, includes an assumption or implicit assumption that the QTL effects are the same. However, for instance, uh, in the case of QTL by background interactions, um, QTL effects would be different. So maybe it's more reasonable to assume that QTL and so the SNP effects are different, but they are correlated. Um, Crossbreeding is an efficient strategy for, uh, for uh, achieving a better productivity and robustness at the animal and at the system level. In dairy cattle populations where crossbreeding has been used, when we look at the individuals, they show different levels of uh, diversity in, in their breed of origins. If you consider rotational crossbreeding, for instance, where crossbred uh, cross dams are mated to purebred sires from different purebreds, the genetic composition or, or the, the genetic composition of these crossbred animals becomes an admixture of, of the breeds uh, depending on which sire breed is used at each uh, rotation cycle. Generally, the genomic predictions are done separately within breeds and neither the crossbred data is used nor these crossbred animals get evaluations. There were some attempts to use data from admixed individuals. What is common uh, to those studies is that they rely on uh, an overall genomic bit composition. What I mean with overall is that uh, they use a, a common value for the whole genome, but actually if you pick two individuals uh, with exactly the same genomic bit composition, they may have a very different pattern of admixture over their genome depending on which chromosomal region is uh, inherited from which puberty. We hypothesized that if we account for breed origin of alleles, we can have improved prediction accuracies in multi-breed uh, genomic prediction. To test this, we uh, did some simulations, starting from uh, the real genotype data of uh, Danish Holstein, Swedish Red and Danish Jersey. Uh, Jersey here uh, in the simulations represents the small breed, and we uh, did simulations for nine generations, uh, both for pure breeds and for admixed individuals. For admixed individuals, we first mated uh, Jersey males and Holstein females and then continued with red Holstein and Jersey males until we reached nine generations. So we had nine generations of purebreds, purebred uh, populations and uh, nine generations of an admixed in, in population. In total, we had 10 replicates starting from the same base population, but of course uh, the males and females assigned and also the, mate, the matings uh, differed across these replicates. We used only data from first five chromosomes for computational reasons because we had a lot of scenarios and replicates and so on. And uh, from uh, the 13,000 SNPs we had, we selected 250 to be QTL uh, with a restriction uh, on minor LF frequency. And we just assumed that QTL have relatively low minor LF frequency uh, compared to SNPs. And we simulated QTL effects directly from the multivariate normal distributions, considering three levels of uh, correlations uh, for, the, for, the, for the QTL effects. These are one, that means identical QTL effects, uh, 0.5 and 0.25. And the reading values were simulated by simply multiplying the, the QTL effect and the allele content. We considered two traits to represent uh, high and uh, low heritable traits. Um, but I will uh, share the results for high heritability trait uh, because the, the, the pattern uh, was the same for low heritability trait. We used a full uh, rotation cycle, uh, generation 6, 7 and 8 in the reference population and generation 9 as validation population. 
When forming the reference populations, this means that we had 3,150 uh, from Holstein, Rayland and Bix populations and 660 from the Jersey population. The way we use data uh, of these individuals can be classified in three, uh, three groups so that uh, we can call them as pure, combined and breed origin of value. In the pure, we estimated SNP effects separately within each pure breed. In the combined, we combine the data for, for pure breeds or also combine the data for pure breeds and mixed individuals. In the breed origin of allele approach, we uh, traced back the breed origin of each allele for all individuals. Uh, for within a cross and multi breed prediction, we used a simple model, but of course, uh, this, uh, this XP, which stands for a breed proportion, doesn't exist in within an across breed prediction, it, it, it exists for multi breed prediction. We assign priors to uh, sub-vectors of SNP effects. And for the breed origin of allele approach, we um, used this model where we had three components, each component for one breed. We also partitioned the uh, SNP, effects, uh, SNP effect vectors here and assigned uh, priors to these sub-vectors of SNP effects. This allowed us also to, uh, to uh, assume a heterogeneous uh, uh, variance over the genome for each of these um, three, three breeds. In the simplest case, this means that we assumed breed-specific SNP effects, uh, which are also uncorrelated between the breeds. We also assigned priors such that the, breeds, uh, the SNP effects are breed-specific but correlated. This means that we assign a multivariate normal uh, prior for each subvector of SNP effects, and this allowed us to rely on uh, local uh, correlations uh, for the for the breeds rather than a genome-wide correlation. We investigated three region sizes, let's say, and these are one SNP, 100 SNPs and the whole genome. And if you want to relate them, one SNP can be seen as an extension of regular base A to multi-breed scenario and the whole genome uh, can be seen as an extension of regular SNP up to uh, multi-breed scenario. I just chose 100 SNPs to, uh, to, to demonstrate if a grouping SNPs has an advantage in uh, genomic prediction, uh, in multi-breed genomic prediction. First thing we, we should look at is the effect of region size, and each color is uh, for a breed, and also for the admixed population. And uh, one thing we can see from here is that the uh, whole genome resulted in uh, the lowest uh, accuracy, but there was no difference between 1 SNP and 100 SNPs. So from now on, I will continue with the results from uh, 1 SNP uh, region size. Uh, looking at the small breed, which is just in our case, uh, we can see that uh, a cross-breed prediction I mean, using SNP effects from Holstein and Red uh, to predict the uh, breeding values or to estimate breeding values of a uh, Jersey population was not really efficient. We, when we combined data from uh, the pure breeds to predict uh, uh, Jersey population, we can see that apart from this identical QTL effect scenario, the accuracy is dropped compared to using data from this Jersey breed. But when we added data from admixed individuals, the accuracy is increased even for the uh, correlation scenario of one. And when we considered breed origin of alleles in these blue bars, we also see that uh, we could further improve the accuracies. When we look at uh, uh, Holstein, which here represents the large breed, we can see that a crossbreed prediction were also not very efficient. When we added data from uh, multiple, uh, from, or when we combined data from uh, these three periods, what we see is that accuracy is generally dropped, maybe not as much as it dropped for Jersey, but it dropped very little. And adding data from admixed population slightly increased uh, the accuracy over just combining the pure breed data. But of course, uh, again, here Holstein represents the large breed and Jersey represents the low breed. So we also expected more benefit of using uh, data from uh, uh, other breeds and also mixed individuals uh, for the smallest breed. And also we slightly improved the accuracies over just combining the data when we used breed origin of allele models. 
When we looked at the accuracies in admixed population, we see that they actually represent the recent relationships because the Holstein was the, actually uh, the breed, the sire breed for this admixed population, for the validation population, and then ground sires were from the red and so on. So this, this, these, uh, these trends here represents the um, relationships of admixed individuals to these pure breeds. When we estimated SNP effects separately within each pure breed, but accounted for breed origin of allele for admixed individuals, we get an accuracy, a uh, reasonably high accuracy. But when we simply combine these three breeds, uh, we have uh, an improvement only when, uh, when the QTL effects were identical, but uh, it reduced again the accuracy, uh, uh, accuracy as the uh, correlation of QTL effects reduced. When we edit uh, data from admixed individuals, as of it's a different breed, accuracy is improved and actually it makes sense because here we consider admixed population or admixed uh, individuals as a different breed and this scenario is more like uh, doing multi-breed prediction without including the target breed in the reference population but here we add the target breed itself in the reference population so the accuracy is improved but accuracy is also improved when we considered breed origin of alleles and it was in some cases as high as 10 percentage points. So to conclude we can say that uh, combining pure breeds and mixed populations data in the reference population was beneficial particularly for the small reference population uh, for, the, for the breed with a small reference population and when we consider breed origin of allele approach we could further improve the accuracies over simply uh, combining all available data. And in real data applications, there are some limitations. You should decide which breeds to be included, and you should also estimate the breed origin of alleles. 